Welcome everyone inside the Wildcat feature. I'm Joe Mertens and joined with me is a special guest, NFL draft prospect, Liam Eichenberg. He's also class of 2016 for the St. Ignatius Wildcats. Liam, thank you for taking time out of your day. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Liam, first, of course, we're leading up to the NFL draft. Thursday is the first day, the first round. Where are your emotions heading into draft weekend? Yeah, so for me, I think it's more about, you know, not knowing where I'm going to be. Um, it's kind of, it's not like I was in high school trying to decide what college to go to. This is kind of, uh, as, as some people have said, it's kind of like I'm applying for college again, kind of not knowing where I'm going, you know, if I was a normal student. But uh, for me, you know, I, I'm excited. You know, I'm going to be with my parents, my grandparents at home in Cleveland. Um, I, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's not about getting drafted. It's about having a long career. So got to keep that in mind. And I'm going to be excited regardless where I go. How much more special is it for you with the draft being in your hometown of Cleveland? Yeah, I think it's pretty awesome. You know, we, uh, I was concerned with COVID last year. I, I, I didn't know if Cleveland was still going to have it, but I mean, I'm, I'm very excited for it. You know, my buddy is going to be downtown. I'm going to be at home, but uh, it, it's definitely, you know, it'll be nice hometown kid. You know, hopefully I get drafted pretty high. And what has the draft process been like for you the last couple of months? I know that, you know, there's the, of course the anxiousness of when you're going to be drafted and trying to impress all of these draft scouts. What has that process been like for you? It's been a lot of Zoom calls, you know, kind of what we're doing right now. Um, you know, each team has been allowed to meet with each player five times for an hour each meeting. So, I mean, I've had endless Zoom calls, endless phone calls, FaceTime calls. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of me trying to convey who I am as a person and also as a player. Um, you know, I think I would have done well being in person, visiting, you know, their facilities. But because of COVID, we can't. Um, I was out in Phoenix, Arizona, training for a couple months, get my body in, in good shape and best possible position for uh, my pro day, which was a couple weeks ago. And, uh, you know, now I've just been at Notre Dame working out. And I'm just hanging out right now, just excited for Thursday. Of course, after the 2019 season, uh, you had the opportunity to actually declare for the draft, but you decided to come back to Notre Dame for one more year. Did you ever decide or did you ever think about entering the draft last season or was it just a, for a foregone conclusion you were coming back for one more year with the Fighting Irish? You know, I, uh, I thought about it a little bit. You know, I, I submitted my, my grades for the, for the uh, review committee, for the um, NFL committee. Uh, I got my grades back. I mean, I, I think I could have left. You know, I probably would have been selected on day two. Um, but for me, you know, going to Notre Dame and, you know, as you know, it's a special place, just like St. Ignatius was. Um, for me, it was about coming back, you know, helping the younger guys and, you know, showing them what it took. Um, and then also, you know, I wanted to win a national championship and also win the Joe Moore Award, which unfortunately we didn't do. But, you know, going to Notre Dame, you know, being in an offensive line room that's extremely special and unique, I think it was, you know, it was the best five years of my life. You brought up St. Ignatius, and I want to bring back all your first varsity start mm -hmm. happening uh, your sophomore season way back when in 2013. Of course, it was against Brother Rice. What do you remember from that first start with the Wildcats? Yeah, I remember, I remember I was playing left guard. Um, I think we lost that game, if I'm if I'm right. I think they had a coach that was winning, like, or he's coaching forever or something. I think it was like his hundredth win or something crazy like that or something wild. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of games that, you know, haven't gone our way. I mean, at Notre Dame and also at St. Ignatius, but you know, a game that I remember is my last game is one played St. Ed's in Lakewood stadium. You know, um, we ended up not making the playoffs and we lost. I mean, it's, it still bugs me today, you know. The one time though, in your, uh, in that same season, in the sophomore year, against all odds, playing St. Ed's, repeating the game to have enough computer points to qualify for the playoffs in your sophomore year, you actually, we actually get the win. And it was against Sean Crawford, who ended up being a teammate of yours at Notre Dame. Have you ever brought that up to him of just, you know, getting the style points, winning that game back in your uh, sophomore year? Uh, no, but Sean and I do talk about Ed's Ignatius. You know, we always talk about, you know, football games, I ask him if he watched it. Um, he follows basketball pretty, pretty heavily. So, you know, him and I kind of talk about it. And at the end of the day, you know, Sean's a great guy, you know, guys from St. Ed's, you know, <laughs> back in high school, I, I wasn't a fan of them, but you know, they're, they're good guys. They're very similar to Ignatius guys, but, um, yeah, it was, it was awesome to have Sean as a teammate. He's a great guy, great teammate. 
good good person. There's such an outlier between those who played high school football to those that actually get to play college ball. You had the opportunity to actually play college ball at Notre Dame, and you got to see your first action your sophomore year in college. What was the difference between high school to college ball? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing is just overall time commitment. You know, you really don't realize how much time football takes up um, when you're in high school at the college level, um, just from meetings to walkthroughs to, you know, everything. I mean, you, you really have to – you can't procrastinate. You know, you have to plan everything out in regards to academics. Um, and I think Ignatius did a good job preparing me for that. But at the same time, you know, football, you know, it's, it's a full-time job. You know, I, I don't think people understand that in college. It's, it's, you know, if you want to be the best, you want to be one of the very best, you know, that's your, that has to be your sole fo focus. And also school is very important too, but, you know, football takes up a lot of time, a lot of meetings. I mean, I, I'd get to, to the facility at one and I wouldn't leave until like eight or nine. So, I mean, it's, it's long days, especially in season, but, you know, it's definitely worth it. Of course, you know, with going through St. Ignatius, you know, there's plenty of Notre Dame fans. I mean, the Fighting Irish is a big time tradition. There's plenty of faculty and staff that love uh, Notre Dame football. And I think for a lot of them, what they bring up from last season was the game against Clemson, where you guys play the number one ranked team, Clemson. Uh, you guys go to double overtime. You win it. The fans storm the field. Was that the biggest game that you've ever played? in? Yeah, I would say so. You know, we're playing number one Clemson. Uh, we, I think there was like a minute left. We had the ball, ended up driving down the field. And I remember we had in the overtime, you know, they scored and then we scored. And I mean, I, I knew after we scored, I'm like, we're going to win this. I'm like, they're, they're tired. Um, felt like we imposed our will on them. And it, it was awesome, you know, especially having some students in the stands and also having them rush the field. Um, it was awesome. It was, it was like a dream. Now, of course, you know, you've played in a plethora of NFL venues uh, during your college career at Notre Dame. And, uh, you know, you're going to be accustomed to NFL stadiums coming up soon here in the fall. Um, but excluding Notre Dame, do you have a favorite venue that you've played in? Yeah, when I uh, – my first year starting, we played at Yankee Stadium, and that was just amazing. I remember I was on the field, um, I think it was like in the second quarter or first quarter, and I turned my guard, you know, we always fist bump. So I give, <laughs> give him the fist bump and I, I'm looking at the defense. I look up and it says Yankee Stadium. And I mean, it was it was incredible, you know, especially because I have a lot of family up in New York. Um, it was just, it, it gave me chills. You know, it was, it was a special moment, it was a cool opportunity. Now, I want to talk about your toughness. And I think a lot of people saw that, the viral uh, tweet that went around of your eye, the big shiner that you got against Florida State in that game where you actually came back in that ball game. And I think it proved a lot, you know, offensive linemen, they're tough dudes. And for you, uh, you're definitely were one tough guy in that one, getting in the shiner and uh, getting back in the game. What was the process like after uh, taking a shot to the eye? Yeah, you know, I remember taking it to the eye and then, I mean, I couldn't see out of either of my eyes. Um, you know, I was more concerned, you know, I'm going to miss plays. That was my, my, initial thought I was like okay hopefully this isn't bad hopefully I can come in and play um you know I got to the sideline you know the doctors checked it out we had a great medical great medical staff in Notre Dame they checked it out and my contact actually popped out so I needed another contact I couldn't go back in without a contact but um you know I didn't realize how swollen it was at the time I didn't have a mirror I couldn't I couldn't tell they ended up getting the contact and they tried to put it in and I'm like what's happening here like why is this taking so long and I mean, there was just a little sliver of space and I didn't realize it. So I ran up into the locker room. I look at my eye, I'm like, holy heck, this is swollen shut. So I had to, you know, <laughs> I had to force it in there. Um, and honestly, I probably didn't even need it because I ended up going back in the game and it was swollen shut right when I got back in the game. So I was icing down the sidelines. You know, for me, it was, it was more about, you know, not letting my team down, you know, not, you know, me not being the guy who, you know, possibly cost us a game. Um, I felt like I, I could see enough out of my right eye to, you know, help my team win. So, you know, I, I wasn't going to step out for that. And I guess that proves another point of just playing offensive tackle. You've played it for so long that you could be blind and still be able to do your job. I mean, is that how you felt it being not being able to really see out of both eyes? Yeah, I felt in pass pro, you know, I just had to set to my spot, you know, keep my basics, keep the target inside target slightly above. Um, and you just go back to my fundamentals. 
you know, when you're visually impaired, you got to go back to the fundamentals and the basics. So that definitely helped a lot. And, uh, you know, I was had a lot of great teammates, you know, help me out a little bit. Throughout your senior year at Notre Dame, you didn't allow a single sack on Ian Book. And, you know, talking about offensive linemen, if they have that stat in the back of the mind, they always want to keep that quarterback jersey clean. Did you ever have that thought process in the back of your mind, like, wow, I haven't given up a sack this season? Or did you just kind of go up by the wayside and just had to take care of business? Yeah, it was kind of more just taking care of business, you know, making my blocks, um, doing my job. At the end of the day, you know, you got to do your job, got to be consistent. Um, you know, obviously I had a quarterback that could run. So, I mean, that helped a lot. But, um, you know, going into the season, I didn't want to give up a sack. So I was very fortunate to, you know, have such great offensive linemen and also, you know, have been coached well. We talked about, uh, you know, playing St. Ed's guys and then they became teammates, Sean Crawford uh, being an example. But what was it like playing – former teammates from St. Ignatius in the college. One that comes to mind is playing against a former quarterback that you blocked for, Dennis Grossell, at Boston College. What was that like playing guys that you used to be teammates with? Yeah, you know, I, I love playing Boston College because I got to see Dennis uh, before and after the game. It was uh, it was definitely special. You know, he stepped in there and he did really well, uh, I think, two years ago. Um, you know, he had a hell of a career. You know, he did very well at BC. He loved it up there. And my brother was about to go there, but uh, he ended up switching to Ohio State. But, yeah, it was special, you know, especially understanding how much work goes into college football. Um, you know, a guy like him who's a walk-on and then ended up, you know, starting for BC. And I, I believe he set a record for passing yards one game. Um, I mean, he was, you know, I, had a lot, I have a lot of respect for Dennis, and we still keep in contact. Of course, now with the college career coming to an end, what was the most athletic player that you have seen? Maybe it is on the defensive side where you're blocking the defensive lineman or a blitzing linebacker or was on the other side of the ball. Do you have a most athletic player that you played against? Yeah, I would say uh, Brian Burns from Florida State when I played in my first year. Um, I ended up getting my ankle messed up. and I mean, it just made it even harder. I mean, he was so quick, so fast. Um, yeah, he's, he's a hell of a player. Now, getting ready for the draft, of course, you've had many teammates that have gone on to the pro level. Uh, former uh, teammate of yours from St. Ignatius, Draymond Jones, got selected in round three a couple of years ago by the Denver Broncos. Have you been in contact with these guys? Have they helped you along the way getting you ready uh, for the NFL draft? Yeah, I, uh, I haven't had much contact with Draymond. You know, he kind of went to Ohio State and went to Notre Dame. Um, you know, guys I stay in contact with are Notre Dame offensive linemen like Quentin Nelson, Mike McGlinchey. You know, Sam must for Alex Bars are all starting for a team right now. Um, yeah, I mean, those, those are guys I lean on. You know, I look to when I need need help. I have questions. You know, they're more than uh, welcome to answer them. So, you know, it's definitely something about Notre Dame, um, the culture that we established here in the offensive line room, and also just overall. Of course, uh, when leading up to the draft, months to weeks to days, the mock drafts are just all over the place. They're, every day there's a new mock draft, a positioning of players. Uh, have you at all looked at any type of mock draft? And if not, how hard has it been to kind of keep your eye away from those mock drafts to see where you would be selected? Yeah, I would say it's tough. You know, it's it kind of pops up on your feed occasionally on Twitter. You kind of got to get off social media. And then also, you know, my grandpa and my buddies and people just randomly send me it. So, I, I mean, I've seen a couple. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, the media really doesn't know what's going to happen. You know, nothing against the media. Um, you know, their job isn't football, e even some of the respected, you know, analysts, you know, I mean, I think, I think they do a good job, but at the same time, if you look at years past, I mean, I think you can nail down like the top five picks. And then after that, it's, it's a mess. Um, but, you know, for me, I, I think I appeal to, you know, guys who understand football, um, and, you know, do it for a living. So I, I think that I have a good chance of, you know, being selected higher than people think. Of course, Liam, Thursday is round one of the NFL draft this weekend in Cleveland. Uh, it's going to be a special one. Um, your final thoughts heading into draft weekend, you know, have you taken a moment to just take a step back and soak in just an incredible moment in your career? Uh, no, not really. I think uh, I think Thursday I might, but I mean, I've been at Notre Dame working out every single day, doing drills. Um, like I said before, it's not about getting drafted. It's about, you know, having a long career. So, for me, it's it's about getting to that team and helping them win. And, I mean, that's the most important thing right now. So, um, you know, I, I think the real work hasn't even really begun. So I'm obviously going to enjoy it, being with my family and my grandparents. Um, you know, hopefully that, that moment happens Thursday, though. 
Liam Eikenberg, class of 2016 from St. Ignatius High School, went on to play at Notre Dame and is a top draft prospect, uh, offensive tackle uh, coming into this weekend for the NFL draft. Liam, I want to thank you again, uh, taking time out of your day and great. Have just the best of luck this weekend. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe.